<laughs> we are back. Look at all you shiny people. All right. We don't even want to talk. Up here, who's next? You first. Come on. We're going to do every single person. We'll start with you then. Good okay. job. We like that. Elbows. What's your name? Uh, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly, can we touch you? Yes, please. Yeah, well, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> so okay, pretend yeah. that, try to attempt to pay, face your face toward that when you're talking so everyone can hear you. <sighs> yes. Can anybody hear me? No. Hi. Hi. Wait. Hi. Yeah. Do that first. Okay. Yeah, right? <sighs> yeah. Let's just sit here a minute. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we can touch you? Yeah. Anybody in the room do not, is, does not want to be touched, speak now or forever hold your peace because we're handsy today. We can tell you that right now. Hands are going to be touching, okay? So if you don't want to be touched, it's on you to say something. All right? That way we don't have to ask every time because it gets really tedious. You. What's going on with you? Um, Why is that uh, talking to us? Because uh, it really wants out of my system. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, um, I'm pretty aware that I live in survival mode, like, yeah. like pretty big time. Yeah. And uh, we're just gonna put our hand right here kay. as you talk, okay? Um, and and I've been watching myself do it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, and I'm super aware that there's like way more possibilities of funness out there than what I've been experiencing. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a, I'm a, I feel like I strive for my life, and, and I, I would mm -hmm. prefer to thrive mm -hmm. and really like mm -hmm. just bask in, in in the beauty that I see around me. Yes. And uh, my my habits and my are um, feel like these fucking bungee cords that got me tied to this chair. Mm -hmm. That I, every time I step out with a little bit of boldness, I yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and boy, I actually want it to spring me back in because I'm uncomfortable out there. That's it. <laughs> See how you know your truth. And and, and I I get back to my comfort zone. I'm like, whoo, whoo. Okay. Thank goodness for my couch. <laughs> <laughs> and then. I get kind of bored after a while <laughs> yeah. and sort of want some more life and 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 I would like to be a little bit more comfortable with my discomfort. Yes. And um and I got <coughs> yes. Um yeah. That's enough. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good. Use his hand. Yeah. Breathe. <sighs> you all feel this. This is a Sebastopol <laughs> thing. <laughs> we did this last month. <laughs> You're all such dreamers, right? You have such passion and such awareness. Look at you. The such awareness. God, how much awareness can there be in one room, right? Huh. You add up all the awareness in this room. Some countries don't have that much, right? So uh -huh. there's seriously, <laughs> seriously. So there's all this awareness. And then what happens with the awareness comes what? Pain. Because you know what's going on. And you say, oh my God, I know. I know and I can't do anything about it. I'm powerless. I'm powerless. And you step out of your feelings of limitation and you get there, right? Like you said, I'm going to bungee out. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Holy shit. The survival instinct comes along and says, you know what happens when you do this? Get your head chopped off. <laughs> Burn at a stake is one of your favorites, actually. You've, you've done that one several times, right? Yeah, it's like, I'll try again. Oh, they burned me again. <sighs> Fuck, what am I supposed to do now, right? Try again. Yeah, yeah here you are. So what do you do? You're on your couch. I can't take that risk, <laughs> right? You yeah. see that sign that says, you know, it's a burn day. You're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't go out on burn days. <laughs> I stay at home. <laughs> this is I know to stay home on burn days. I've learned it. That's, I've taken that three lifetimes, burned at the stake, burn days, I'm at home. You see those little smoke signals going up. You're like, fuck no. <laughs> it's not safe to be in the world today, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. see? Totally. We don't even have to ask. Breathe. Part of what's going on with you, and we suspect it's going on with more than just you in this room, is that tension that you were just expressing, right? That tension that you're, you're telling us about. Very, very emotionally telling us about that tension. That tension becomes living. Yeah, I noticed that. Instead of life, right? So you start, okay, we're going to just let go for just a sec, but you just sit right there. You don't go no place, right there. Good, calm hands. Calm hands. We're going to have to hold that one still. The tension becomes living. 
the frustration, the I can't solve it, I can't do it, I can't make a difference, I don't know who I'm supposed to be in this world, I don't know how I'm supposed to be in this world, what is my path, what is my program, who am I supposed to be a comp, what, who, when, why? Boing, boing, like that bungee cord was a good explanation of it, right? And so that tension becomes reality. That tension becomes who you believe you are. And you know it's a lie. You know it's a lie, because you can look at a tree, no tension in a tree. You look at a duck. The duck's not tensioned, right? You look at flowers, maybe coming up out of the ground, but after that, doesn't look too stressful to me, right? There's you, you sense, you feel into nature. You feel into it and you say, why can't I be like that? Kind of, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then the question gets answered, the why can't I be like that, the answer comes, what we're perceiving, these may not be your words, but the way we perceive it is the answer is, I can't be like that because I know too much. Because I can't be simple like that. I can't be simple like that. Because I went on the internet. Because I opened the <laughs> newspaper. Because I turned on the radio. Because somebody, you know, I saw someone homeless or hungry or a dog that looks uncared for, right? You have a sensitivity to you that instead of that being your mojo your mojo is this tension you're using this tension as the way to face the world is that why i sort of feel like i'm kind of like that it's all this activity and Mm -hmm. energy and what Mm -hmm. going on and it's challenging to be it's just there's a lot yeah (laughs) and uh so uh rather than yeah (gasps) yeah uh i I just you retreat (sighs) yeah you retreat a retreat. Okay, we have a solution up. for this. Okay, cool. It's a tool. Veronica told you about some of our tools. It's called the 10 things tool. It's easy to remember. 10 fingers, 10 things, right? The 10 things tool is this. You are only one person. Living intention is not emanating positive vib- vibrations into the world, right? You can't be happy in this tension. You can't feel good in this tension. So something has to change. Agreed? Agreed. And this is how it changes. The 10 things tool means this. You pick 10 things. That's all you get to fuss with. That's all you get to think about. That's all you get to worry about. You only get to go to those blogs. You only get to look at those newspapers. You only get to talk about those things. You be strict with yourself. Why? Because thinking about a thousand things means you live in tension. And that ain't helping anybody. Agreed? Yes. We don't care if they agree or not. (laughs) You can't live in that tension. You can't be of service or of help or of support to anyone in that tension. And then when you're in the world, what are you giving the world? You're giving the world tension. So you take 10 things. Now, technically, we did evolve this tool to the one thing tool. Because you can only really do one thing at a time. However, to go from 1,000 to 10 is a big step. So we don't want to push you too hard. But we're going to let you know that it goes to one thing. Because you can only be doing one thing at once and you can only be in the moment anyway. So it's the one thing tool, really. You're big kids. We can give you the one thing tool. So you pick one thing, and we would say we would like you to pick your delight. And what we mean by that is what fascinates you, what delights you. All of the things that make you stressed out and and feel overburdening to you, they're, they're still there even though you've stressed about them for years. So you need to have a different relationship to them in order to actually affect any transformation in the world. So what we'd like to see you do is to spend some time, like a week or a month, just saying, the things that I'm stressed out about do not get my attention now. What I'm going to give attention to is what fascinates me. So the beauty of that flower, the gloriousness of that tree, the loveliness of that dog, instead of it being, oh God, they're cutting down trees again, it's, oh God, look at there are trees here, right? So we want your attention on what fascinates and delights you and feeds you, rather than on the things that make you feel disempowered Because the true gift you're here to give the world, all of you, the true reason you're in the body, many, many people ask, why am I here? You're here for one thing, all of you, one single thing, to emanate your truth. Right now, your truth is tension. But that's not your high vibrational truth, right? That's your low vibrational truth. Your high vibrational truth is fascination and the ability to take that awareness and put it on something that emanates out positivity and construction into the world rather than a feeling of disempowered frustration. Now, you might think, well, but I have to do something about the whatever the starving children in Africa is currently, right? You know, that box of the I have to do something about it thing. 
The thing that you have to do about it is to offer your high vibrational truth. And in you, it's the ability to be very observant and aware. But the things you've been observant and aware about have been those things that make you feel disempowered. And that's familiar suffering is what we call that. It's a familiar place. It's a suffering place. You guys are all very good at suffering. And you go back to that familiar place rather than get up off the couch and risk getting burned alive again or whatever it is you're worried about this week. Because what happens is you say, okay, I'm ready. I feel good. You go out into the world. You lead with this kind of everything's a little fucked up. And I'm sure I'm supposed to be doing something about it. If I was actually a good person, I would find out something I could do about this, that, this, that, this, that, or fucked up. And then you think, okay, I'm going to make a stand. And when I make a stand, I'm going to get killed and or the survival instinct's going to get triggered so bad, I may as well just stay on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do instead, the idea is, I am going to go into this world and look at the things that fascinate me, that delight me. Not as like to put on rose-colored glasses and ignore the starving children in Africa issue, but as a, I need to get my vibration higher. I need to get my center stronger. I need to be in the truth of a positive outlook. And then that will be the energy I contribute to this pro- all my projects rather than this blocked, afraid, confused, disempowered, overwhelmed, rubber band kind of feeling. So start with what fascinates you. And you'll find yourself, when you get a little triggered, wanting to retreat to the familiar suffering of overwhelm. And that's the moment when you just look it right in your immediate environment. <gasps> Isn't this carf- carpet soft on my feet? Right? Isn't that ch- wind chime beautiful outside? Now, you could just as easily think about the starving children in Africa, but we know where that gets us. We want to contribute high vibrationally to the world, and we do that by awareness of what delights and fascinates you so that your truth is a truth built on that foundation, and then you contribute that foundation to any project you get involved in. Because it's time for change. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Off you go. Who's next? If we go fast, we can do everybody, but that means you got to... <laughs> well, at least you acknowledged it quickly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was the, the, the ambition. <laughs> mm. That's good. Ah, that's always a good thing to have. Oh, pretty new skirt caught on drum. All better. We have purple Kleenex for later. How are you, dear? Purple. We haven't seen you in a million years. What's going on with this wrist? Oh, well, all of me has issues. Yes, apparently. Um, We'll start with your wrist. Relax. There it goes. Yeah, good. These these have to come off. No problem. Okay, good. Talk to us. Well, I feel like I've made, I'll start with... um, Compare me to me. Good. And I feel like I've made uh, quite a bit of uh, growth in the past decade. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm still in pain. Yes, we can tell. And I have tried mm-hmm. everything I can think of. Mm-hmm. I've gone to Brazil. You did go to Brazil. I've had Koreans work on me. I mean, <laughs> every nationality, every everything you can think <laughs> of. And um, the last people I went to, I felt like they could do it. They could have done it. But why they didn't, I didn't know. And I thought it must be something the matter with me. Yeah, see, so that's the temptation, isn't it? So it's your back. Yeah. Yeah. Can you... Neck, hip, shoulders, back. Yeah. Can you put your legs that way so we can touch your back? Be careful. Yeah, that's okay? Are yeah, you comfortable enough there? <laughs> I'll do anything. Okay. Mm. No one will be able to hear a damn thing you say, but they can hear us. That's all. Right. <sighs> well, I'll just sigh anyway. Yeah. And this is the big issue. I've gotten so much better at handling myself emotionally. (laughs) Okay, so let's just have less words for just a minute. We're just looking here. I hope this would be the case. You never worked on me. Shh, less words. Whew, fuck, Mindy. Mm. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck a duck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, hang on. Can we get a bowl of water? Okay, Mindy, Jesus Christ, all right? We can't, we can't put Veronica in the path. <laughs> it's right here, Mindy. That's a big part of it. Yep. Breathe. Everybody, please breathe. Okay. 
I am willing. I am willing. Yeah, that's always a good one. I am willing to align your free will with the idea of transformation. It's an extraordinarily powerful phrase. Thank you, Gwen. If you could just put it here so we can just dip the hands in there because this is some big shit here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We might make your clothes a little wet, Mindy, but I, we think you can handle it. There is a, 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 a uh, congestion, we'll call it, of energy in your lower spine primarily, which is affecting the ability for your energy to move up the spine. And that congestion of energy is, um, is uh, offering you the opportunity to hold into old patterns. And, and it's giving you all kinds of reason to, to hold into old patterns justification right it's justification for suffering i have this thing and it's holding into these old patterns and it goes all the way down to your coccyx all the way down to your tailbone <laughs> excuse us it has kind of like a worm energy or a snake energy not kundalini but it has like this sort of snake feel to it and there's this um idea here that we could pull that energy out of there for you and if you want it pulled out, we will. I am willing. Okay. If we pull that energy out, part of what has to happen is you have to then be willing to step into life in a different way. Right? You can't, you, this comes out, you can't stay the way you have been. Not that you've been wrong or bad. We're just saying that. It's like any kind of moving progress along these lines. You can't go back. I mean, mm -hmm. I tried to bitch and moan about being made to wait the other day and I couldn't even get into it. <laughs> 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 and for those of you that will listen to this later she just said because you probably couldn't hear it she tried to bitch and mo moan about being made to wait and she just couldn't even get into it we love that that's classic and it's exactly that energy that's going to help facilitate moving this out of your body so everybody who's here with us there's something in you that you wish you could dump as well Everybody's got something. Mindy's is a little more loud, but you've got something too. Every <laughs> single person does. We've never met one who doesn't have something. A memory, obsessive thinking, a pain. You feel it? Whatever it is that you have, you've got one. Everybody does. A wish I hadn't done. Mm -hmm. So as we work with Mindy, we're also working with you. Are you all ready? Are you all willing? Yes. Yeah. Seriously. We're asking really. This is a real question. Because it's we're about ready here. Together now, I am willing. Ready? Right now. One, two, three. I am willing. Ooh, Mindy, Mindy, Mindy. Come on. Let it go, Mindy. Let it go. More. 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 God damn. More. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. Come on. All the way from the top now. Go, go, go. All the way. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. That yeah, got it. That did it. Now. Big opening in the heart chakra. Now. Part of releasing is lay it down and walk away, right? You lay it down and you walk away from it. The familiar suffering is familiar for a reason. It's because you go back to it. stuff, but it's, it, it works, so we'll do it today. We're going to imagine, get Veronica's legs out of the way. We've already let it go, but now we're at the lay it down and walk away. Everybody's energy that they decided that they wanted to let go of today. We'll just, just imagine it going to the bowl. It doesn't have to be a big shebang. Just imagine that that energy is in the bowl now. This is how we're going to lay it down and walk away from it. Because we're going to get Gwen to throw it outside. Not quite yet, but soon. Better, huh, Mindy? Yep. Big difference. You were really ready. You were what they call ripe. <laughs> yeah, plus now you're wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then when you lay it down and walk away... Okay, turn around. Yeah. When you lay it down and walk away, what you do after that is you fill it with something else. So then the best thing we've ever got is insight from your soul, right? We skip over guides. 
these days and we go straight to your soul, that which is you eternal, that version of you that's eternal. You just say, I'm ready for my soul's insight to fill the space in me, whether it was mental, physical, emotional, etc., that used to be occupied by that familiar suffering. And in your case, that pain. You really did let go of something big. I know. It's kind of creepy. Thank you. Yeah. We're still kind of creeped out. We don't have to care where it came from. Or no, anything. God, no. <laughs> Fuck, we have better things to do. You want to pick something up after you laid it down no. and walk away? That's the first way to do it. Where oh. did it come from? How was it? Why did it look like a snake? Was it green? How long was it? <laughs> oh, for God's sake, right? Just You're not let it go. Lay it down and walk away. The curiosity about it keeps it alive in you. The curiosity about what it was, why it was there, how long it was there. How did I get rid of it? What did Elohim really do? <laughs> Please, right? All right. That's why we usually don't do woo-woo things like the bowl of water and all that stuff is because we don't want to create even more things in you. But yours was pretty heavy duty. It's been around for a long time. Now you look lighter. You look lighter. So the muscles in your body may have a reaction to the energy work we did. So you might be more sore, but we feel very powerfully like something shifted in you. So just let that breathe in you. And Gwen, if you could... Take that, pour it on the cement. Don't pour, it on, any, don't pour it on anything alive. <laughs> Thank you, dear, for being so good about that. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. Jump up. Yes, and tell us your name, please. Sandy. Sandy. Yes. Uh, oh, I have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a lot of pain for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. It bugs the shit out of me. I don't have time to ask for help or anything like that. <laughs> but I've gotten, um, mm -hmm. uh, I've made a lot of really good friends because I've needed help and mm -hmm. have uh, mm -hmm. started asking for it. Mm -hmm. But I'm tired of being in pain. Mm -hmm. And where does it come on you? Uh -huh. On mm -hmm. around my gallbladder. Yeah. And what have the doctors said? The doctors have said. Don't try any of those flushes, for God's sake. Mm -hmm. And uh, poke, poke, does that hurt? Yes, that's your gallbladder. Yes, now that we all know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't eat, so don't, because you need to fast for this next test. So I'm pretty, um, I'm grateful that they know that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to stop being in pain. That's an extraordinary attitude, huh? I'm grateful that they know where my gallbladder is and that it hurts. Right? Right. Well, you could start at a worse place. Yeah. But you're like, why? Yeah. You're so over it. Yeah. How long has this been going on? For over a year, almost. A good chronically, about nine months. It's a long time. A long time, since before January, easily. I'm just looking at you. Sometimes we just need to look. Right. Right. Like, sometimes it's just... What the hell? I hear you. Yeah. You have a really interesting disconnect in your body, and that's not a hugely bad thing, but it could be a contributing to this. Mm -hmm. The top half of you has one energetic, and the bottom half of you has another energetic. Do you feel like a divided person sometimes? Probably. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. It's maybe not an easy question. I'm probably disconnected from the fact that I could be divided. <laughs> <laughs> fun to come here you guys all have such good sense of humors right you're like yeah well, well i'm totally fucking over it but it's probably true anyway yeah <laughs> it's just really interesting to us because you have a really interesting lightness sort of from here up and you have more of a density from about here down in the middle we're not quite sure what's going on there's <laughs> most of the doctors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hey, we're in good yeah. company, right? Yeah. We don't even have letters after our name. Right. Um, it's, we're just going to touch you, mm -hmm. but don't let us hurt you because mm -hmm. we don't know how sensitive it is, right? It's hot. Mm -hmm. Lit up, mm -hmm. for sure. We think that the, the underlying, um, an underlying aspect of this is this disconnect we're feeling. Because you're very shiny on the top. See how shiny she is, right? She's very shiny from like here up, right? She's got this shiny thing going. And you're like, shiny person. <laughs> but from here down, not so shiny. Dense person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's a couple different ways we could go with this. We, we sense that there is an argument about being in the body. Do you have that argument that so many light workers do? Why the fuck am I here? Yes. Yes. 
See, the body gets confused when you do, why the fuck am I here? It goes, I think we're here, but we're not supposed to be. What it tells the answer. Yeah, that's probably a lot of your problem. You're here because you want to learn what it's like to be in density and duality. Your upper chakras, meaning your crown chakra and your third eye, get that. They're like, yes, opportunity, earth, density, duality, free will, love, you know, Mm -hmm. sex, drugs, and rock and roll, all the great things about being in a body. And you're like, yeah, 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 except for gallbladder issues and money issues and, oh, God, the car won't start and fuck, (laughs) right? That's really what's going on here. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll is all well and good and fun, except when you have no money and no car, no place to live, right? right? And then it's like just stuff you can't have. Right. (laughs) So, So there's this part of you that's going, I know I am a spiritual being having a physical experience. I know that I came here as a re- for a reason on purpose. I know these things. No question. Mm-hmm. And as I try to live in this world, I'm overwhelmed by how hard it is. How just like it gets going okay and then something comes up and I got to battle with that something comes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and you're using, you know, your power chakras here, right? How mm-hmm. you are in the world. Mm-hmm. Your power chakra is like, how I am in the world is it feels like it's just way too thick here for me. And if I can just be in my spiritual connection, I can recognize that there's something important going on. But when I try to do it, it's just way too thick for me. It would be good if you breathed right now. (laughs) (laughs) We said that and she held her breath. We're like, ooh, how long can she do that? (laughs) Well, because this part went out there. Yes, yes. You're like, like, yes, I get it. it. Yes. Yes, Okay. This is true. This is true. This is your story. So your gallbladder says, what we're going to do is freak out in a mysterious way to try to integrate to bring your attention. Now, you got to remember, the body only has so many ways it can get your attention. And if you don't listen to subtle ways, it gets louder and louder and louder. And then it goes into how ridiculous does it have to get? Yep. <laughs> Typically, it gets pretty fucking ridiculous is what we found, right? Mm-hmm. You guys will go very ridiculous before you pay attention. And for this situation, and, and we imagine more than just sh- she has this situation in the room, when you have that conflict between... I'm a spiritual being, but physical life is so hard and so challenging. The, the, the correction to that is to correct your outlook on why you're here in the first place. We talked a lot about it earlier. So you got a little mm-hmm. premier, a uh, pre, what do you call it? Start off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Preview. That's good. Primer is another one. Did trailer. You say I was thinking yes. Trailer. Yeah, <laughs> trailer. That's well, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Hmm. Rochart thing, right? We can go <laughs> hmm on that. Okay. So. What we want to do with you is we want, and probably a lot of the rest of you, is to have a different outlook on life because this one's not working. Mm. And the outlook on life that we have seen work the best is this is happening for me, not to me. Nothing happens to you. It all happens for you. So when the car won't stop, start or stop. That one's a little creepier. When the car won't go properly, you say this is happening for me. When you're having a hard time in your love life, this is happening for me. When your gallbladder hurts and nobody knows why, this is happening for me. Life cannot be that it's happening to you and you're a victim of life. Oh, this is true. Yeah. So one of the ways that you can do, I am not a victim in life, is to recognize that you've created it all. Right? So you say, I'm not a victim. That means I'm a creator. Yeah, creator. Oh, God, I'm a creator. Fuck. Why did I create this? I feel that way. Yes. I don't feel like a victim. Yeah, good. But you feel like a fuck creator. I feel like shit. Yes, yes. We have a whole teaching on this. You guys can go on the website or send Veronica an email called the Levels of Creation. So we have a whole thing about this that you'll probably enjoy. And it's on the YouTube so you can watch the whole thing. We won't go into it completely today. But that's one of the normal levels of creation. You have level one where you say, um, you know, it's duality. Then you have level two where you like, I create my reality. Fuck. We might be missing this. Did we get it right? Then level three is <laughs> I take my responsibility for We skipped a level someplace. Anyway, pretty much <laughs> it's duality, victimhood. Then it goes into I create my reality. And then it's usually I create my reality and this is a fucked up reality. Why did I create this? So then you go into being mean to yourself. Then you go into the place that we'd like you go into, which is I take responsibility for my reactions to my creations. This, this is where is you kind of nut up, you know, and you say, yeah. fine. I created it and I will take responsibility for it by acknowledging 
I created it. Mm -hmm. I created it and my choice of reaction to this creation is my next creation. Because mm -hmm. what tends to happen is you go, I created this, <sighs> it sucks. Then you're creating the next moment from it sucks. Instead of I created this, it's happening for me, I may not know why, but I'm going to know that it's cr happening for me because I'm a creator and I wouldn't mm -hmm. have put it in my life unless I needed it, mm -hmm. even though I can't see the reason. And then you say, I'm going to create my next moment out of my reaction to this creation. And if you can go from it sucks to I don't know why it's here, but I know I put it here. Just that. Mm -hmm. I know I put it here. That will change your life. I know I put it here. Because you're the kind of woman who has that ability to say, this is my shit. You have that ability to own your life, to own your truth. Mm -hmm. You just have been owning it up to the, I think it sucks place. And then you're stopped because you don't know what to do next. And the place is, okay, I'm having a sucky reaction to this. And I get to choose my next reaction. Mm -hmm. And the temptation is to go into familiar suffering as your la next reaction, rather than to go into a choice. A and choice. here the choice is, this is happening for me. This is happening for me. This is happening for me. And the question might be, you know, why? And that's actually not the interesting question. The interesting question isn't why, because that puts you in your head. It's, it is. And then in is, you open to revelation about why it's happening rather than hamster wheel mind, we call it, you know, this mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. about why it's happening. So it's like, my gallbladder hurts. Why? What dinner? Was it my dinner? Was it this? Was it this? Was it this? Was it this? You've done that like a five million times, right? Mm -hmm. So how about this is, this is happening for me. This is, and my choice about my next reaction is going to create my moments after this. Mm -hmm. And, and we love it when your choice about your next reaction is, I don't know. This is hard. It sucks. I don't like it. And it's still true. It's still here. Mm -hmm. It's still me. It's still my creation. I still own it as mine. It wouldn't be in your life if you didn't put it there. Mm -hmm. And that's something to really breathe into because it's all well and good to say I'm a creator and it's a whole nother ball of wax to say this shitty thing would not be in my life if I didn't put it here. I feel that I put it there yeah. somehow. I just would like it to go away now. Yes. So really, I don't even want to ask why it came. Yeah. I'm just really happy. You know, I mean... I feel like I've gathered a lot from having this. Yes. And now I'm done. Yes. So, so, I, so I don't with, really care how it happened or why I would like it to with just With that go away. idea, what we what you can do is to say, "Great. It's hurting, right?" Mm -hmm. And you it's good sometimes to put your hand there, right? Mm -hmm. And really feel I it. created this. It's hurting. I know I've gotten a lot of benefit out of it. It's been a difficult way to learn, but I have learned. I'm ready to learn the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for the other side of it. And then you don't jump forward in time to the other side of it. That's the key here for you, especially. Mm -hmm. Don't jump forward to what, it, what do I have to do? How can I make it go away? Right. Just that in this moment, my desire is to move past this and to learn things in another way, mm -hmm. right? So you're just acknowledging it's true and saying I'm ready for something else without projecting into the future about what that something else is. Right. That's the mistake the no i'm error. happy i'm happy yeah. in whatever form it wants to come in however it wants to show up i don't want to i don't want to go oh it has to be a little blonde lady in a red car oh yeah okay we noon. get you now yeah you know? we were just I'm, yeah. I'm happy for the guidance of good people good spirits yeah. none of the other bullshit yeah. thank you saw that side don't mm -hmm. need it mm -hmm. but just clean energy yeah to heal and the thing is is you really have the power within you to make this transformation without a lot of additional support because you already have a lot of support. We really feel like the shift for you is a combination of acknowledging that you're really here on earth because you wanted to be, mm -hmm. not because you are made a mistake to be here, right? Right. You've already balanced more. Your face isn't as shiny, which is good because then you're not like, woohoo, <laughs> right? And you're a little less dense here, but that, that problem is making you dense in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's, okay, I would, if I'm really a creator, this is even more obvious. I wouldn't be here unless I wanted to be here as on a soul level. Mm -hmm. So arguing with the fact I'm here doesn't help me learn. No. So why did I choose to come to this planet? I will learn the answer to that when I'm out of the body. Right now, I'm going to learn what I can. I'm going to have the experience I can. I'm going to be fascinated rather than in that frustration, mm -hmm. right? And for you, 
it's okay so making peace with that is number one on the mm-hmm. thing number two is what is is you know saying mm-hmm, yep this is we're on a team mm-hmm. you're my you are my creation you are my teammate mm-hmm. you flared up to give me an opportunity and i have learned so much from this this opportunity and i'm also ready to be more subtle in my body's experiences because you're going to balance yourself mm-hmm. more and i don't need this huge pain in order to be aware of the opportunities I have in my life to see that I have friends, to see that I have support, right? Mm-hmm. I can, I can back off on the intensity mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. and I'm going to own that the next moment, even though this creation feels shitty, I'm going to own that the next creation comes out of my reaction to this one. Okay. You stack those three things up and it's going to really help you. Okay. Good. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. And what is your name? Kristen. Kristen. Mm -hmm. What's your story? (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm just um, right now having a hard time. Um, I have a bleeding disorder and Mm -hmm. I've been bleeding a lot and um, just having a a hard time being in my body and... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really want to be here. I'm a mom. Mm-hmm. How old is your child? He's six. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Warren. 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 Yeah. I'm going to say we only know one Warren. And, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm having a really hard time right now. And, um, yeah, yeah I have, like, my throat is really tight. Mm-hmm. I notice I have just this tightness in my throat mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, and I it's it's hard for me right now not to go into the fear place of like leaving my son or just yeah. We forgot to say in the beginning by the way we're not doctors, right? This is all energetic advice. If you need to see a doctor, go now, right? We're not doctors. We don't dispense medical, legal, professional, psychiatric, any of that stuff advice. We look at your energy field and we set, tell you what we see. You Mm-hmm. Yeah, hi. Hey. <laughs> you are not all the way in your body, dear. Yeah. Yeah, because like when we first met you, we were looking up here going, why are your eyes way up there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's why you're afraid you're going to leave your son is because yeah. you've left you. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. Like, hello. So we're just shaking you in a little bit. Why are you so scared to be down in your body? Yeah, let's hold hands. Why are you so scared to be all the way in your body? What happened? Yeah, you don't have to say it out loud. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been exactly safe, has it? That's all that needs to be said out loud. I'm just going to put her hand right here, okay? Is that all right? Yeah. Let it out. It's okay. Nobody's going to have nothing to say about it. You cry as hard as you want. That's right. Let your body talk to you. That's right. Let your body talk to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You let your body talk to you all you want. We're even going to do this for you. You don't have to do it. You just let your body talk. Go ahead. You don't stop crying just because we do that. You just keep going. Do this all day. Yeah. Yep. Come on now. Come on. It's okay. Let it. Let your voice. That's right. That's right. Let it. That's right. Yes. 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 Right? Yes. Yes. That's good. A little bit more. You got it. You got it. A little bit more. You're not done yet. (laughs) Trust this. We'll tell you when you're done. That's our job. The word no. Very important word. It's a complete sentence as well, by the way. Doesn't need a period. 
doesn't even need an exclamation point. You don't have to get pissed off to say it. You just say it whenever you want. We advise frequently. Say no more often than you do. Say no first is one of our tools. Somebody asks you, you want to go do this? No. That frees you to think about what you really feel rather than what do they want from me, blah, 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 blah. Say the word no for us. No. <laughs> oh, good try. <laughs> okay? I'm going to try just a little harder, okay? Yeah? Come on. No. Better. Mm-hmm. Who thinks she's got a bigger one in her? Yeah, yeah. Come on. No. Much better. Ooh, that gave it to you. No. Uh-huh. Come on. No. Mm-hmm. Giving us another one. No. Ooh, we liked that one. <laughs> that was a good, you could tell, huh? You could feel it. Come on. No. No. Mm-hmm. What's going on for you? You couldn't say no. So you thought you never got to say no again. And to escape the things that you want to say no about, you go up. Your energy goes up and out of your body and your body bleeds because it doesn't know where the fuck you are. Like, where'd she go? Who were we just talking to? You, same thing, right? Oftentimes in these kind of meetings, we end up with a theme. You can see how they go into each other. This is normal. You guys aren't here by accident, right? This... You think you're creators, right? So, of course, you come on the right day. You didn't get to say no. You forgot you knew how. You're choosing to say no by saying no physically, energetically, rather than verbally. Just because you didn't get to say no those times does not mean that no is gone from you. No is your word. Do you do art? Do you draw something like this? No? Okay, now you're going to, right? <laughs> so your new thing is to write the word no. Color crayons, get your kid in on it, right? Mm-hmm. Ink pens, color crayons, felt markers. We don't care if you graffiti it on the side of a car. You and the word no have got to become friends. Mm-hmm. So when you discipline your kid, what do you use instead of no? <laughs> we're, we're, you've probably been pretty creative, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, Please stop. <laughs> right? The word no mm-hmm. and the energy of no especially. Mm-hmm. You swallowed it. You swallowed it. Right? Yeah. I wanted to say no. I didn't say no. And all the fallout from that yeah. pushes you out of your body. Yeah. Just coming in. You see our eyes get more sparkly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting... Getting closer. What do you want to say? Normally we'd let you out, but you have to talk because it's your throat thing. (laughs) So this is part of it. (sighs) Yeah. Speak. Say something. You can just keep saying no as far as we're concerned. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I guess I want to say no to leaving my body. Yeah. I'm just... I I need to be here and I am here. Mm-hmm. And um yeah. How about I want to be here? I want to be here. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I want to. It's hard to want to sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> God isn't that the truth. We love that. And did you see the power in that statement? Mm-hmm. It's hard to want to sometimes. That doesn't mean I'm creating not being here. It doesn't mean I'm any of that. What it means is it's hard to want to be here sometime. But the flowers are blooming and the winds are chiming and you got a kid. Right. And you're going to learn how to use the word no. Yeah. And you don't have to be quite so worried about protecting yourself by exiting your body. That's the thing is you've you've lifted out. You go up. You've lifted out to protect yourself. Right? Yeah. And so now we can put our hand right there because you're actually in there. Is your neck hurting a little bit? Um, I was just relaxing a little bit. Yeah. That is my other thing is, yeah, I just need to relax my, relax. (laughs) Well, this is the thing. 
when you're in this tension between your your energy field not being in your body look what it did to this one right she's got this thing that the doctors can't sort out right that tension between you being out of your body literally and your body trying to navigate the world without you in it causes body problems lots of times it does your joints right because you your body's like elbows here elbow, that doesn't work right so it can cause problems like that right mm-hmm. god you've changed so much just sitting here sometimes we like our work <laughs> i mean we always <laughs> like our work but just like you it's really nice to have instantaneous feedback yeah okay so we've got the head thing going on the throat thing's better we really want you to practice with this word no okay have yeah. fun with it right you know when you're by yourself scream it yeah we didn't we're not going to ask you to do that ask teo sometimes we do so were you on no? No, yeah. no was your was your word. We were doing primal screaming one one night. It was great. Teo was screaming was screaming no. Okay, we're just gonna put our hand here. Is this okay? So is it a v- yeah. vaginal kind of bleeding or rectal or M- menstrual? Menstrual. Yeah. So too much menstrual blood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now I've been taking some herbs and it's stopped. Yeah. But I see that as like a not the solution it's just band-aid right yeah you know no right right yeah without telling the whole story no yeah yeah so when you say no let her have a voice too right your miss lady parts need to have a no (laughs) right a lady parts no Mm -hmm. so let's you know Veronica's like, it never fails. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, you don't have to. We're going to let her do it. Right. So, so you sit like with your legs apart. Right. And when you voice no, you feel it there too. You know? Yeah. Let Miss Thang have some voice. Right? No. Get your thing away from me. No. Right? <laughs> no. No. Because you know what happens is when it's time to say yes, then it'll be beautiful. Yeah. Because it's a no. Right. Yeah. She has a voice. She's crying in the only way she knows how. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Miss Thang is like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. You go right ahead. You cry as much as you want. We got all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lots of women in this room right now, right? And even guys, you can let your, get in touch with your lady parts, right? We're going to have a collective lady part no together, right? You can feel your lady parts. Everybody's got parts down there, has had them touched, whatever, at least once that they didn't like or enjoy, right? Most of us, more than that. So a collective lady part no on three. <laughs> One, two, three. No! You guys can do better. Ready? Come on. <laughs> Ready? You, did she do it? We were, too, we were too into it. We had eyes closed, right? The internet people were like. <laughs> You've got lady parts too, you internet people. We want to hear it from you. All the way out here in California. You ready? We're going to do it together. Same thing. I'm going to count it. One. Breathe. Two. Breathe. Three. Here we go. No! <laughs> See how good that is? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. A little coughing is a good thing. Right? Did you guys did you feel it? Great. Yeah. <laughs> Look how shiny she is. She's all sparkly. <laughs> like, I have lady parts. <laughs> One of the things about, about things like that is it does break that problem, that connection you're having, you know, of, and you all have it, right? You're like, I did that too. Yeah. Whoa, you look different. <laughs> Did you come with her? Look how different she looks, huh? Big time. You look completely different. Yeah. yeah. You feel different. Yeah. Yeah. I feel better. You do feel better. And you keep touching your neck, and we understand that because you're putting yourself down in your body, and your neck's going, oh, wait a second. Haven't experienced this for a while. So you may be a little creaky. Mm-hmm. Water, of course, and saying no. Yeah. So for you, if you feel discomfort, 
no, 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 no. And in her case, no isn't denying the truth, right? We don't want to get confused here. Her saying no isn't denying the truth of her. Her saying no is owning boundaries. So with you, we said, put your hand there and say yes. <laughs> with her, she needs to say no, and it's the same exact thing, but it's no as a boundary, not yeah. no as denying reality. For you, to accept reality is to set a big boundary with yourself, which is no is my friend. So practice saying no a lot and have fun with it. And what we say is if somebody calls you up and says, hey, let's go out, no. And then you pause, hang up the phone, and you say, okay, now that I'm off the hook, I don't have their expectations and their energy involved in this, how do I really feel? Oh, how I really feel is that was something I actually did want to do. And you call up and you go, I've changed my mind. We have yet to have a report from someone who says that their friends were like, oh, no, you can't come. <laughs> you suck. You said no. Right? Especially if your friends are people who are living consciously. Because most of the time, you hang up after saying no, and your friends are like, yeah, she set a boundary. Right? If you can't set really good, loving, luscious boundaries with your best friends, right. they're not your best friends. Trust us. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have a l really, uh, Veronica has a dear friend. She had her cello recital last week, and her dear friend um, is in a band, and she's gone to hell and back watching that band play over the years. And so she finally has her gig, right? And he's like, you have a gig. I'm going to come to your gig. So he calls up and he's like, okay, I'm supposed to say no first to your invitation. <laughs> I can't bring myself to say no, but I'm saying maybe. <laughs> so, so he ended up not coming and she was like, cool. He didn't come because if he had come, it would have been obligation or else he would have already been there, right? He, if he would have, if he would have come naturally, that's how you want him there, right? God, you changed. Okay, you feel all right to go sit down now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Lady Parts. <laughs> Lady Parts says no. <laughs> <laughs> rawr, rawr, rawr. Yeah. Good job. Who's next? Come right. How are we on time there, Miss Mary? Because, you know, we're just rocking and rolling, and Veronica's going to be like, uh-huh, that was fun. Yeah. I like to be able to walk. <laughs> oh, good. We have plenty of time. Plenty of time. 52. How long it's been. Yeah. We got at least 80, so we still have a m at least a half an hour. <laughs> it's Mary's job to look after us in that way, but oh, God, look what we've done. The sun. Okay, so this one, we have a spare. Okay, good. This one's not melted. Maybe this one needs to go in the fridge so it doesn't ruin something. Thank you for that. It's open, so be careful you don't drip. All right, you, what's your name? I'm Ryan. That's right. You did say that yes. earlier, but we forgot. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have the unique, possibly, experience of b having no idea where I was going today. I had no idea that I was coming <laughs> here. I had no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, I just showed up, and I feel like um, I'll just ask the question that's been on my mind. Good um, place to start. I've been... You I've think a lot. Some journeys, yes. <laughs> I think a lot. That perhaps is my weakness and maybe my sickness, but I have uh, taken some journeys, and I've seen... Uh, what I believe to be my path on this planet, and it may be preposterous for me to even assume that. But wow, um, you think a lot even when you're trying to ask your fucking question, yes. dude. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of thinking, huh? <laughs> There's so many. What do you call them when you make those? Ten, well, no, the when you make a um, caveat, like you've had three caveats in your in your question oh. thus far. So yes, yeah, so now he's going to do his scratch. <laughs> <laughs> he's rubbing his beard. <laughs> True. Excellent. So we're going to have you start over because okay. this is obviously your issue. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So let's start over. Yes. Hi, you're Ryan, right? Yes. Did we get it right? Yes. Excellent. What's your question? My question is, um, I feel my path on this planet is to clean up the nuclear mess that we have made. Okay. And um, I've been searching and looking through people and I thought I would ask you if you know of anything or a certain path that I might take in the immediate sense to expedite things and nice. move forward in, in this path because I feel Okay, that's very enough strongly. question. Yeah, yeah. We don't like the word because. That's why <laughs> you don't know that about us because we've just met. Right. Yeah. But because outcome and hoarding. No, we're not good on any of those. So a lot of times if you say something and then you say but, the truth is before the but. Watch yourselves. You'll have a hard time saying the word but from now on because you'll go, da-da-da-da, but, oh, fuck. 
because is another one, right? You said this great statement, and then there was a because, like you have to justify your position. Right. Like I have this, da, 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 feel very strong about it because you've already said the whole reason why. The mm-hmm. because is usually because you're trying to make somebody else like I'm feeling you're not quite getting me, so I'm going to throw a because in. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the but you throw in is modifying your truth. Like, here's my truth. I want to clean up nuclear waste. But if I could maybe just, you know, that's how you make it socially acceptable for other people is you right. throw in a but. Because is you kind of going, please believe me that this is a real thing. Right. But is the other thing. So watch your butts and becauses and don't be an outcome. <laughs> what was the other one? Hoarding. <sighs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <laughs> especially energetic hoarding of stuff that's not yours. <sighs> yeah, okay, back on subject with you now. Right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we're looking at you because we want to know what it is, what we're trying to determine is what it is about nuclear waste that disturbs you the most. And we don't want you to answer that question because we don't want you to think. We want to look at your energy field and see what your energy field tells us about that. You want to make a big difference. Yes. You want to make a big difference. And that's a big problem. So it's a place to make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go about cleaning up nuclear waste. Sure enough, making a big difference. We'll tell you this right now. All transformation starts from within. You can't change anything in your external world unless you change your internal world. Your internal world creates your external world. That's how it works. No questions. So your desire to clean something up, your desire to make a big difference. First, we want to just turn that attention inward. What is it I'm trying to clean up? What part of me do I want to clean up? What is it about me or my life or my thoughts? And we'll tell you, your thoughts are hyperactive, dude. Mm -hmm. radioactive (laughs) right you've got hyperactive radioactive thoughts Mm -hmm. your thinking process is crowded Mm -hmm. now it's all well and good to be a big brain we seem to attract them right we have lots of people in our circle that are extremely smart and we told them you don't know anything and they all revolted i know a lot of things (laughs) not really you know the smallest percentage of something and if you get to the point where you think your brain tells you the truth of it you're mistaken so Opening up to soul's perspective, opening up to insight, the aha of the life rather than the think it of the life is going to be an interesting process for you. The aha of this journey you're on. And if you want to go and work on nuclear waste cleanup, by all means, but recognize that you want to approach it in a very clean way yourself. Mm -hmm. So having so much thinking and so many tangents that you're using in your thought process to get from A to B. You know, from A to B, there's a lot of side stuff that goes on. And we would love to see you clean that up Mm -hmm. by recognizing that the true and profound transformation is going to come from insight and ahas and that dawning of consciousness that you have the ability to access. You're just filling it with a lot of busy in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So what we would say is when you think about something as a practice, let yourself think about it and then say, how could I think about that in a more efficient way? In a, in a less taking every instance into consideration. Because there's a, there's a path of thought to something that is a very refined path, right? You know, when you have proofs that physicists and mathematicians do, Sometimes they'll say it's an elegant proof, right? Because it doesn't go all over the place to get to the end. It's very elegant. It tracks Mm -hmm. in a very elegant way. We think what you're really striving and desiring to clean up is to have elegant thought patterns. Do you Mm. feel this? Yes. Yeah. So there's like an elegance that you're looking to experience. So are you guys friends? Do you hang out a little bit sometimes? We have a son together. Oh, you have a son together. Well, (laughs) so you guys hang out. (laughs) Um, or you hung out. Uh, so you're going to see each other in the future, guaranteed. So um, letting yourself, this is the aforementioned, not Warren, Oren. Yes, yes. Letting, 
letting this conversation happen where she can say no to you and you recognize that it's a growth for her and you can say to him a little more elegant about that please right because you need reminders when you go into an unelegant thought pattern mm -hmm. because it's not going to be obvious to you because you've been thinking this way your whole life Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to come into an elegance about thought that's going to give you a, a better sense of yourself in your body, grounded in yourself, and then moving out into the world and doing good deeds, whatever they happen to be, you'll be, as we were talking to you, contributing a very elegant, balanced version of you instead of a, there's a problem over here, I have to go fix it. We call that leaning forward, <laughs> where you're leaning forward, you're out of balance because you're on your toes. Get into your heels, and this is a tool for everyone. Feel your heels. Now, most of you probably don't run around wearing high-heeled shoes, but it's the fastest way to, to feel this tool. Because when you're wearing high-heeled shoes, you walk on your toes, you fall over, or you look really, you know, you look like one of these people who's never worn high heels in their life. When you walk in high heels, you have to be really conscious of where your heels are touching the shoe and where that bottom of that spiky heel is because there's those hazards out there. Trust us. We've been running around with this girl in her high heels and there's, it, it's this world not made for high heels. It's a dangerous place. Wow. Smile. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> We're trying. So as you walk in the world and you're aware of your heels, even if you're not wearing high heeled shoes, it brings you, we've just seen it happen energetically so powerfully, it brings you in the center where your heels are under your butt and your tailbone and then your spine and your shoulders are in a relationship and then your head, that it puts you in this position where you're aware of your own energy. When you see a lot of things in the world that you wish you could change, you're almost always on your toes, leaning forward in other people's business. Sometimes this looks like nosiness and gossip. For you, it looks more like, I want to make a difference in this world. I have a son. I want him to see that I've made a difference in this world. I want to feel like a man, right? There's this, I want to get and do and be. The only way we've seen this work is that you get back on your heels for you refining your thought process to make room for the big answer. Because that's what that issue needs. It needs a big answer. Mm -hmm. There's lots of brilliant people putting little answers and putting scientific brain power on it, and they haven't come to the answer. It needs insight. It needs aha. It needs that place where you go, no one's tried this yet. Mm -hmm. That There's no room for that in a brain with unelegant thought patterns. Just imagine your brain's like a computer, right? You guys all have computers or something like it. And, and the disk drive is full because you've been thinking the same thoughts over and over again, and it's replicated on the hard drive. So if you can get that back to just the things you need, there's all this open space. And the open space, if you don't fill it with hamster wheel thinking, again, <laughs> it can be filled with aha. And that's what you really want. Your heart's desire is that aha that helps. Mm -hmm. It'll help you first. It helps her, helps your kid. It helps your life first. And then from that place of being able to access the aha, you can decide, is it the nuclear thing? Is it something else? Is it just growing a better tomato, right? What is it that gives me that feeling of helping? But it starts from or getting your house in order a little bit more first. Mm -hmm. And using that big brain in a way that harnesses the insight from your soul rather than just repeat, 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 repeat the same thoughts over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it Einstein that said of thinking, no, it, um, doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Yes. Yeah. We say if thinking could have solved it, it would have solved it a long time ago because mm -hmm. you sure have thought about it enough. Mm -hmm. So thinking is not the ultimate answer. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times big brain people go, I can't let go of my big brain thinking because then what will I have? For you, that's your spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. What is there when I don't fill it with thinking? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Look at she, she's like, thank you. <laughs> she said thank you louder than he did. We love it. Oh, wait. We moved it up here out of the sun. Hello. Hi. Shiny person. What is your name? Barbara. Hello, Barbara. Talk to us a bit while we have a chocolate. Oh, well, I just jumped right up here. I feel kind of nervous. Yeah. And, um, You're amongst friends. Even if you don't know them, you yeah. still know them anyway. Yes, yes, yes. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> How
how to phrase this. Um, First off, you need to breathe. From your heart. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my question, or many questions, <laughs> is about um, my energy. Mm-hmm. And I have been in committed, long relationships. Mm-hmm. But it's been very elusive the past few years Mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering and and I know sometimes when you want something so much Mm -hmm. it's you know it comes when you you don't have so much energy on it the wanting isn't the issue it's the wanting something so specific right like we'll just use a job example so that you don't get triggered by using a partner example is it a man or a woman you're a man you're after a man okay when you have a job thing you got to be really careful that it's not, okay, I want a job in an office that's 30 minutes or less from my house that recycles and composts, that works with a, you know, uh, uh, up and coming company that is going to make, you know, like, whoo, hang on a minute. How about let's narrow it down just a little bit. Like I want a job where I feel respected, where I grow spiritually, where I'm compensated well. Because when you start to put a lot of conditions on it, It becomes a this thing, right? A brain thing. It becomes a brain thing really fast. Now, with relationships, because we've all been in them, right? We know. I don't want another one like Tom, Dick, or Harry, right? (laughs) It's like, (laughs) oh, I've done that. I'm not doing those Geminis. Veronica, I will never date a Gemini again in my life. (laughs) Ain't happening, right? So the next five guys that pop up, Gemini, 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 Gemini. She's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Um... Be really careful because we'll tell you, especially in this time of accelerated energetics, you have no idea what's good for you and what's not. And this is a great thing because what is going to be supportive of your transformation is something that's in that aha category rather than I thought about it hard enough and I, I brought it into my life. You want to manifest from that acceptance of this moment This is here for me, and I'm ready for a bigger picture. I'm ready for connection. I'm ready for intimacy. I'm ready for, and I know I have X, Y, and Z that are my issues, and I'm ready to have companionship in the sorting those out. And then letting yourself say, I am not going to try to put this, figure this out, brain this out. Right? Because for you, we point at your heart when you came up. We're like, mm, right? Mm-hmm. So there's this thing going on in you. And part of what we feel from you specifically is you have a picture of what you've done. You have a picture of what you think would be good. You look around the world and you're like, I don't know how this picture gets filled. I don't see this picture getting answered. And you get into a place of lack, right? Is this resonating with any single people in the room? Yeah, there's a gums up that sense of lack. Like my picture can't be answered. There isn't a solution here. I can't have. And then you can go one of two ways. You go into the, okay, well, I'll drop some of the things that I think are important to try to widen the field. <laughs> have you done that one? Yeah. Yeah. We thought so. A little bit. <laughs> or you can go more hyper-specific to justify the fact that you feel that there's no answer. Like, well, of course there's no men that are this, that, this, that, and this, that. Like, so you can go either way. Sometimes back and forth, right? <laughs> Mostly for you, what we see you needing to do is to let yourself off this mental hook, right? You've got yourself kind of on this mental hook of, well, if I was ready or if he was available or if there was a possibility for my heart's desire to be made, it would be here. And since it's not, I must not be ready or he must not be available or he must not. There's like this justification uh, policy we see you doing. If it was, then it would be, so it's not, therefore it can't. Like there's this game, you're back and forth, you're playing with yourself, right? So just kaboom, let's blow that up, set that aside, and let's instead sit in this idea. I am ready. I am willing. Right? I am ready. I am willing. I am ready and I am willing Mm -hmm. and I feel like I have had that Mm -hmm. strong energy Mm -hmm. and an openness. Yeah. And, you know, about us creating our own. Mm -hmm. I I know I've created this Mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. 
um, and and you didn't say it, so we give you points for that. But we felt the butt, <laughs> right? The butt of, but it's not here. But it's been a year. But it's been ten years. But it's been whatever the the number is. We won't make you say it if you don't want to. <laughs> but what am I missing? Right? The what am I missing? Why can't I see it? Where is it that I can't find it? Right? That that elusiveness. Yeah. yeah what's yes. Yeah. What's the deal? What, what, yeah, what's the deal? <laughs> she has energy like you, like, fuck this. I'm ready. Like, come on. It's so cute, you guys. There's a there's an energy in the room today. Um let's just look real. When we get into situations like this where the first things we say don't create the gate latch, and we'll tell you guys what we mean by gate latch. In a when we're f- tuning into your energies like this, when you get it, we feel, we hear a sound. And the sound is like, you know those gates that have that kind of jubi-jubi kind of thing where the Blink. thing... Yeah. We hear that sound. Funny enough, but that's what we get. When you get it, we hear that sound. That's why we knew she wasn't done. Right? We just said, keep crying. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. We'll feel it. So we said our normal stuff. We felt your energy. We talked to you about it. You didn't gate latch, so... That means we're going to go deeper. You seem ready. Okay. And sometimes what we find the the smartest thing to do is to just skip through like three or four layers and go, okay? Okay. All right. Brave soul. (laughs) Mary was probably going, I know where this is going. (laughs) Okay. Your heart, oh, this is imagery, not fact, right? Normally when we talk to people who aren't doing what you're doing, they have this issue a little bit better. We feel their their heart energy. And in this case, we mean by heart energy, that romantic love partnership energy. Very close to the skin. Yours is back around by your spine. We're looking for it. We're going... Where is it? Where is it? We found it back around the spine area. So what we need to do is put our hand there. (laughs) Surprise, surprise. Good. Perfect. So it's back here. It's back here. So the question, of course, becomes if it's back here, why? And it needs to it needs to go forward. It needs to be forward in you. We call this your energetic billboard. You can imagine that you have, your energy field is like a billboard on the side of the highway. And, you know, you drive by the billboard, and it's selling its goods, whatever its goods are. And, and a, in a flash, you see what it, what it says and what it has to offer, right? Geico insurance or whatever you've got. You have an energetic billboard within you. And as you walk around the world, it's flashing your story to people. And you guys are sensitive to that. Your billboard says, my heart is hiding back around my spine someplace. And potential partners go, wow, she's an attractive lady. She seems fun. Wow, wow. But she must not be available. Her heart's not available. I don't feel her heart. Now, of course, this is giving men a whole lot of verbal uh, credit, (laughs) which it doesn't look. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We love men, but we know their story. We know all about men. Don't be confused here. We understand men in a way that most y'all gals don't. Trust us. Yeah. Y'all gals don't know. A man's going to look at this and go, oh, pass. She's not available. You may as well be wearing a big old rock right there telling him, I'm not, on, I'm not available. I'm a friendly gal. I'm, a, I'm an outgoing gal. You can dance with me, hang out with me, whatever, but I'm, I'm not available for relationship. That's what you're telling them. That's what your billboard says. I'm not available. I'm not available. So something about you, something about your life has made you put yourself on the I'm not available page of your energetic billboard instead of the I'm ready for connection page of your energetic billboard. Because we believe 
connection has meant certain things to you that have not been satisfying. It has meant certain things. You know, you go out with a guy, you like him, you sleep with him, whatever. And then all of a sudden there's this big package of shit that comes along with it that you're not ready to sign up for. So when you think about being in a relationship, you retreat from the package of bullshit. And that's what you show is a retreated heart. So you heard us earlier doing the no thing, right? So there's this idea of how about we do the buffet style? <coughs> Hello, let's all do the buffet style. The buffet style is I have today. I want some mashed potatoes. So are you a mashed potato guy? Okay, great. I'm on mashed potato today, <laughs> right? I'm not into the, oh my God, I have to buy the restaurant just because I want to have sex. You don't have to buy the restaurant just because you want to have sex. You don't have to, you don't have to eat everything on the menu. You can have boundaries. Imagine that. You can say, I'm not interested in getting married. I don't want to have raise your kids. I don't want to pay your mortgage. I want to have somebody to go to the movies with. I want to go on a hike with somebody. And so you get a collection of them. This is the other thing that's good to do. You get a collection of them. And this guy you hike with and this guy you have dinner with and that guy you have sex with. And sometimes you switch them around. <laughs> because you want to give yourself permission <laughs> with that, it tried to run out the back. <laughs> you don't have to switch them around. It's a, that's a, that advanced class, advanced class. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yes, yes. We know, we know, yeah. Well, he can be a hiker guy, right? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what you really are looking for is male energy in your life. You're looking for male energy in your life that you feel safe around, that you can trust, that's not trying to get you to pay his bills, raise his kids, or, you know, be Betty Crocker. You want to be the truth of you with male energy in your life. And that means you have to be the truth of you. And the truth of you is remembering that you and your lady parts get to say no anytime you want to say no, and you get to say yes anytime you want to say yes too, right? That idea of it's safe to have male energy in my life without this big package. Can you feel that? That big package? Mm -hmm. Yikes. So a good thing for you to do would be sit down and make a list of, oh, I saw a handsome man today. What was my immediate reaction to the package of shit that I thought that that was going to come with, <laughs> even just saying hello to him? Because you have a big package, right? And it's, it, there's some funny things in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some really funny things. <laughs> do you want to tell us a funny one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want him to be monogamous. Yeah. Well, apparently, is that is that is that funny? <laughs> in in this county. Oh. It is. <laughs> well, and available. Yeah, available. So that's yeah, always a nice one. Yeah, huge, yeah, yeah, that wasn't exactly the funny ones. Yeah, we were we were hoping for something, but apparently it was funny to all of these people. <laughs> yes. Um, what we would say is. So, so let's just do it this way. You see handsome man A, right, at the Whole Foods, probably. Right. Isn't that where you guys go to pick up men? The Whole Foods? No? Okay. Oh, Andy's. We go to Andy's to pick up men. Okay. So a handsome man in Andy's. Yeah? You know this place. <laughs> or handsome girl you could pick. We don't care. We have, that's perfectly fine. Love is love in our book. Okay, so handsome potential sexual partner <laughs> person <laughs> <laughs> this is fascinating energetically because as soon as we say that she closed yeah she closed up so much we couldn't speak or the throat closed up we were like how many times veronica's like how many times are you gonna do the finger thing there <laughs> <laughs> and then we're she's like wait a second could can we breathe there's a little bit of an emergency going on here yeah wow I'm shy sometimes. <laughs> With men? Yeah, sometimes I'm incredibly bold, but sometimes I'm shy. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to practice. Farmer's market, maybe, is a better choice. So, so <laughs> handsome potential man. Just walking penis, maybe. We don't even have to be, <laughs> doesn't have to be handsome, right? Walking penis goes by. One time when Veronica was convinced there were no men in this world, literally, she was convinced there were no men in this world, literally. This, she was in your situation. No men are in this world. She was believing that. We sent her to the park and made her count. Literally, we made her count. She got to 35 and said, fuck you, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> 
So we're Maybe not giving you that one. Okay. Okay. Because, you know. But <laughs> unless you can't get past this first step on this one, and then you're going to have to do that one. Okay. So, so, so walking penis, we won't even say he's handsome because that's apparently triggering. So walking penis is in the, in the, in, in, in the county. <laughs> and, and we're just going to push on here. <laughs> We want you to entertain yourself (laughs) with what comes up in you. Just sit on a bench, look at a man and say, oh my God, when I look at him, I think, whatever you think, he couldn't possibly be monogamous. He must be married. He's obviously got a girlfriend. He's too recently divorced. Too recently divorced. (laughs) Yes, we get this just by looking at them, right? Blue jeans, guaranteed just recently divorced, right? Right? Yeah, because you're making assumptions. Yeah, because you've got this package of reasons why. This familiar suffering thing. We were talking, was it you? Somebody earlier, we had the familiar, everybody does it. Familiar suffering of, I have this list. So I see a man walk by and I will just pick something on that list, put him in that category, and then my heart is safe in my spine. And my body's lonely, but yeah, (laughs) yes, you, (laughs) we pulled a worm or something out of her and she cried and her lady parts had to shout and we did okay. But you with this, (sighs) (laughs) this hairball thing going on, (laughs) we're going to have some water because this is like, this is like full on hairball. (laughs) (laughs) So here's your practice, right? One, if it helps, count men. It'll be entertaining if nothing else. Two, when you see a man, be amused by your assumptions. Just be amused by them. Because if you are not amused, you'll be sad, and you've done enough of that. Just be amused at your assumptions. There's a man. Here's my assumption. Wow. And then, are you an artist at all? Do you draw, paint, sculpt? Uh, no. Not, can you no, write? No. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> if you can write, you can, be the, you can be an artist. So write down. I saw blonde-haired guy with green shoes. I assumed da-da-da-da-da-da. Then I saw a black man. I assumed da-da-da-da-da. And let yourself play with this. It will make you lighter. It will make you lighter around men because you'll have gotten it out of your system a little bit that you have all these assumptions, all these reasons that they're not going to be a man for you. And you'll start to see how you pre-programmed men. Oh, he's younger, so he probably wants kids. And I don't want to have kids. You know, like, and you'll see how you're just out there slaughtering all <laughs> options by your preconceived notions and your heart and your spine. It's kind of not surprising that you're single and you definitely want to not be single. So how do I move this? Yeah, well, we're going to, okay. what's, what's happened is all of this bullshit has pushed it back. Like every time you see a man that you believe is unavailable, it kind of makes you feel like a hit to your heart, you know? So it's like pounding a nail into a board. It's like a hit to your heart. And, and then it gives you that justification for believing he'll never show up because he, he's not out there. Because every man I see is X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, Z without even ever getting to know them. Oh, but my girlfriend dated him and I heard that he was this, right? So you guys have a smallish community. Do you trade him off? Is there a lot of trading around that goes on with the men? Has everybody slept with everybody? Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, we don't even go there. Oh, we don't even, yes. So. No. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's that too, you know, that you know stuff about the men you meet. So it's easy to assume other things. So you could put, you know, known on your list, known that when Sherry dated him, he was looking at other women, or when Sherry dated him, he, she tried, he tried to get her to pay her mortgage, you know, that, that kind of stuff, right? And then the unknown things that I assume. And use it as a real consciousness practice. It's going to give you an opportunity to know some stuff about yourself that you don't now know. And you can imagine that each time, then down the road a little <laughs> when you, when you've done that for a while, whatever a while is, let yourself meet these men. Just say hi to them. Wave. Hi. Smile. Okay. Smile. We'll start with smile. You have a pretty smile. Smile. That's it. I smiled at him. And then this is where my list went after that. I smiled at him. He didn't smile back. He must be, you know, gay, married, gay and married. Right. <laughs> you know? So, 
So let yourself see where your list goes when you start having interactions, even small interactions. And then at some point, and it doesn't have to take a long time, at some point you'll see a man and you'll go, I have no list. Because the list is in you. And then you'll start being able to attract men that want to be in a relationship with you who doesn't have a list. Because one thing men see they see the list. Now, Veronica has a friend, and he's younger. He's only 30. So his big thing is that when he dates women, they, he doesn't feel like they're dating him. They're dating baby daddy, provider, has a good job, probably will buy a house. He says, they don't even see me. They're, they're basically dating my potential as, a, as that guy. And he stopped dating people in his age bracket because he couldn't stand that. So men see this list and women of different ages have this list. You're, you've had to have this list. This isn't your DNA, right? Is that guy going to bring his kill home to my fire so my kids don't starve? If the answer is no, he's off the list. That's why that monogamy thing is a big issue for some women, right? So this list is a normal thing and you've grown past the list. You all have. It's 2012. We've grown past the list, right? What happens is when you don't have a list, you show up, you say, I am me, and what I want from you is just your truth, not what it gives me, what it invests, what I can get from it, I, not this fantasy world package thing that I have, not this, oh God, I've never traveled, so maybe now that you're older and your kids are grown and, and you know, you're this and that, we can travel, right? Younger women, they want babies. Older women, sometimes they want travel. <laughs> the list changes. Don't have a list. The list, if you need one, is self-respect, respect from him, right? You can treat me with respect, period. You're going to be able to handle and hear my truth. That's a good one, right? So your list starts to be <clears throat> your needs, rather than what you think he's up to. Because all that shit is based on assumption, but your needs are based in reality. What is true now? Your needs are what's true now. And you have that opportunity to share what your truth is and say, I'm looking for a man who can interact with my truth. I mean, basically, I, I, that is my bottom line. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, that's, that's yeah. what I put out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Yeah, but right now your feel. truth is a lot of judgment about men that you don't know. That's the first truth they see. They don't see the truth of you as a person, as a member of society, as a way you function in the world with passions and desires. Because in front of all of that is this list of things about them that they see. So a guy's going through the world and he, he gets a hit from your energetic billboard that says, I bet you're not monogamous. He's like... Am I? I don't want to be. Sometimes I can be. Who wants to? I don't want to be like this. I, whatever. Next. You know, they've got Xbox. <laughs> right? They'll go home and play a video game rather than try to sort that shit out. <laughs> they will. Right? Yeah. It's way easier to just go play a video game. Here's the thing. This is a Veronica thing, but we think it applies. Dudes are dumb and chicks are crazy. Right? Dudes are dumb and chicks are crazy. <coughs> so dudes do stuff and girls go, God, you're dumb. Who would do that? Right? Meaning what woman would do that? Right? <laughs> and chicks do stuff where guys go, fuck, she's crazy. I, I, have no clue. I have no clue what she's thinking. I have just no clue what she's thinking. She just did this crazy woman thing on me. And they expect women to do crazy things and women expect men to do dumb things. And that philosophy can help because this thing you're doing of assuming all these things about them falls in the chicks are crazy category. And basically what you're saying is, dude, you're, I already know you're dumb because you can't be monogamous and you can't do this and you're probably divorced five minutes ago and you, you know, right? So you're assuming he's dumb and you're acting crazy. So let's just scrape away all the crazy <laughs> dumb stuff and go into, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. And then your heart can come forward and then he can connect with your heart rather than with sort of the chicks are crazy part. Got it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, it'll be fun. Do that list thing. Entertain yourself. Okay. Who are your friends here that you do? Are you have people here that know you? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so what's fun for us is if you call her up and you're like, oh my God, today at the 
Home Depot, this is what I decided was true about this guy. I decided he was X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Now go to the Home Depot. There's tons of men there. (laughs) There's so many men there. Veronica was like, if I ever feel bad about myself, I'm wearing a short skirt to Home Depot. Fuck it, man. (laughs) That's like the best way to feel better about yourself as a woman is to get dressed up and go to Home Depot and just walk around. (laughs) Because there are men everywhere. There are just so many men in the Home Depot, right? And you just walk around. You know, and they might say, do you need help? Think of something you need help with. (laughs) I'm looking for the light bulbs. Who doesn't need light bulbs, right? I'm looking for the light bulbs. Oh, let me show you. And then watch what you assume about him. Do you feel bad because he asked if you need help? This is how men flirt sometimes. Sometimes they're just doing their job. And if it's a guy that's not interesting to you, say no. And let some other interesting guys say yes. Right? Just go with your playland. Play. Play at the Home Depot. Why not? You know, if you go to the Ace Hardware, it's too small, right? If you walk around in there for three hours, people stare. But the Home Depot, you can get lost. You can spend an hour in the garden department. No one will blink an eye. Woo, hello. When the phone rings, it usually means you're saying the truth. So there you go. The Home Depot thing is officially true. Have fun with it. See how much lighter you feel? Because you went into a funner place rather than in a... That thing. That's not going to help. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. What time we got there, Ms. Mary? Time to quit. Is it time to quit? We always want to do about 20 more. But we also respect that Veronica kind of likes to walk. <laughs> I don't want to carry her to the park. No, probably not a good idea. We already did that on Wednesday. We adore being with you all. Thank you. We Thank didn't you. get to you. Next time, maybe, it'll be your turn. Mm-hmm. Oh no, come on. Come on. <laughs> we can't go without this. We can't leave you be. Come sit with us. You don't even have to talk if you don't want to. You just sit here with us. Just sit here with us while we say goodbye to everyone. <clears throat> you all are in a beautiful community with each other, and you think a lot, you care a lot, and you forget to take care of yourselves. Okay? A little less thinking, a little more caring about yourselves, allowing yourself to be in your truth and give the world the, 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 the highest ver- vibration version of you. You will make a bigger difference in this world by being in a high vibrational state than you'll ever make being in service mentality and trying to help others without recognizing your truth first. Now, Sometimes this looks like selfishness, right? Sometimes people say, oh, you're being selfish. Yes, a little more selfishness in this world would be a better place. By the light workers, right? You got selfish people that you, oh, they're so selfish, politicians, whatever. We don't care about that. We're talking to you guys. Light workers, those on the ascension path who can be a little more selfish, give themselves the opportunity to make a deep investment in a high vibrational truth which is then emanated into the world as a gift and that gift is what actually creates transformation in this world nothing else does you only have two hands you only have one bank account you only have so many friends that you can rally to a cause but your emanation is so powerful it could change the landscape of this world But until you have a handle on that truth and you allow that truth to be shared in the world without the covering up of, oh, buts and I have tos and the world is such a hard place and why in the fuck am I here in the first place and all that stuff that gets in the way of you going, I'm here and I'm emanating. That's your true gift. And you can all do it every second of every day with no barriers. You don't need a guru, you don't need a diet, you don't need a book, you don't need a class. All you need to do is say, what is true now about me? And then an acceptance of what you find and a willingness to transform it. First you accept it, so you're not fighting your creation. And then you say, I want to have a different reaction to this creation. My next step is going to be a different step so that I can be a different force in this world. Not to make things better, but to create a different you that emanates. That's your true gift. That's your true gift. (laughs) 
she got shiny. <laughs> yeah? Did you need to say anything? I didn't. We didn't think so. Just a little extra loving, huh? <coughs> Affection goes a long way. It sure does. You are loved. You are loved. You are. You are loved. You are loved. Let it out. It's okay. You are. This fancy tattoo. We love that tattoo. Look at that. It's pumpkins. We never seen anybody with a pumpkin tattoo before. Are there supposed to be gourds or pumpkins? We like this one. Looks like a pu purple pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That one looks like a gourd, Veronica says, but this one looks like a purple pumpkin, and that's the one we were looking at. We like your purple pumpkin tonto. Yeah. I bet there's other things that we like about you, too. Look at all this. You a hard worker? Huh? You working hard or you got a lot of cats? <laughs> <laughs> you working hard with cats? <laughs> no cats. Presently no cats. Presently no cats. Yeah. There comes a time when even you, even you, gets to know the truth. And today is the moment. <laughs> today is the moment. You're tough. You're strong. Nobody fucks with you. <laughs> Don't mess with me. I got a purple pumpkin tattoo and I'll put it right in your nose. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm a badass. But I also have a purple pumpkin tattoo, <laughs> so you figure that out. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I want somebody to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> we can tell. You looking for a boy or a girl? Good we were wondering ourselves. <laughs> we thought, hmm, she don't care. <laughs> If you don't have a real strong preference, we think a girl would be good for you. Because you know what? You need that softness. You know? You need someone right there. So is that purple pumpkin tattoo? And if she's got a big old boobies that you can put your head on and feel loved by, we think that'd be nice. Now, boys are good too. Don't get us wrong. But if you don't have a big preference, we'd be hanging out with the girls for a while. There's something about way women love that you need. Maybe boy later, but right now. You close down when we say that. It's okay. Because you know what happens is when you're loved... You let yourself love, it helps you love yourself. That's what we want for you, is to learn to love yourself the way we love you, by letting some big boobied woman into your life. <laughs> One of you girls must have some big boobies that you want to share, or you know somebody who oh, does, with this nice purple, <laughs> right? We're doing a dating service, big no, boobies, no. purple tattoo. Pumpkin tattoo wants a big boobied woman. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want a big boobied woman? They're good. It's a good thing. Right? <laughs> big boobied woman. It's not, you can't really go wrong with that, actually. It's, it's, it's I'm built not in. I'm saying there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're, at, we're clear on that, right? Everybody in, the sur everybody in the room is pretty clear on the big boobied woman thing. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> we made her laugh. It took a little while. We got there. <laughs> Look at you. Start with loving you. If you were a little less hard on yourself, it would be a nice thing. Mm -hmm. There's not really a good reason to be that mean to yourself. You have a lot to offer. You have a fierce spirit. And you have a willingness. That's a rare combination. And you know, it's really enough, right? It's enough. Sure, right, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have the other thing. Well, that's why you're here to grow. 
If you were done, we wouldn't be talking. You're not done. There's nothing wrong with not being done. It's the purpose. Look how cute you are now that you're in your body. <laughs> such, such a nice thing. <laughs> Look at you. Look at that. All right? You and all the rest of you, less thinking, less being mean to yourself. Don't argue with the fact that you have a body. When you're out there working hard and doing all these things you do, do that thing we talked to her about. Be in appreciation and fascination. It's super easy to go into familiar suffering and find things to beat yourself up about. We can all agree on that. So let's, as a group, commit to working a little harder to find things to be fascinated and delighted in with at least the emphasis that you do the rest of it. Okay? Yeah, and, and big boobies. And you know, little boobies are good too. But for her, there's that sort of mama earth feeling. That's, what we're, that's why we got on the big booby thing, right? There's that mama thing that, that she could, yeah, you, you want a mama. <laughs> you need a mama, pink, purple pumpkin lady. Just for a little while. Just for a little while, maybe you could try something else. But yeah. Have you ever gone to see Ama? No. Do you guys go to see Ama? She's coming soon. That would be good for you. Big boobies and you don't have to worry about <laughs> potentially being in a sexual relationship. You just flop yourself on there and then you're done. But that, to have that, you know who we're talking about, right? I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. She's coming. She always comes in June. That would be good for you. That would be good for you. Just to get a taste of what we're talking about in a non-sexual environment yeah. where you don't have to worry about what is it, the package thing. Where were we with you and your package thing? We don't have to do no package. No like, oh my God, joint bank account. Fuck me none of that right just that mama a mama hit <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> she's like <laughs> let me off the chair all right now we're done thank you thank you thank you thank you good night goodbye whatever it is <laughs>